welcome to another tech video so today we're going to be having a look at this uh, tender 4g router so this is um, a requirement for a company that we look after whose upstairs tenant chopped through their um, broadband connection or their cable running down to their router um, so we're going to build this up with a sim card and get it to site to get them out of the hole they're in So let's start by getting into the unit. In the box itself, we've got our unit, tender unit. So this is a white matte finish. Uh, on the back, we've got our two connection points for our 4G aerials. We've got our power switch, power input, uh, WPS and reset button and two 100 meg ports so uh, it's not gigabit but if it's running off 4G then 100 meg should be fine just for a few devices. We've got our quick start guide and then here we've got our sim card adapters so this will do sim card size it will do um, micro sim card and it will do nano sim card as well. That will take all the SIM card types. In the unit, uh, we're going to be sticking in a 3G card. So here we've got a standard 3G SIM card. Uh, on the back of the unit or on the bottom of the unit, there is a small little uh, depictor that shows you which way to put it in. In our case, it goes in like this. So we're just gonna slot that in until it locks in like that and then that sits down on the bottom in the box we've got uh, two aerials which we're going to screw onto the back this is for the uh, this is for the mobile signal so it's not for the I don't believe it's for the Wi-Fi broadcast I think these are used for the LTE signal like that should tell me actually in here number one attach the antennas okay I presume it's for the 4G signal take our power supply that goes into the back port here switch it on, move that to one side and then what I've got here I've got a LAN cable that's going to go to the PC so that we can get to the interface. Uh, you've got two ports on the back here this one is a LAN or WAN port this one here is just a LAN port so we're going to plug into the LAN port and we've got some lights on here that shows that the unit is booting up and when it makes it gets a three three or four G connection, these should light up. And there we go. So we've got a we've got a four G connection now. Okay, so the interface page um, is on this device, so let's have a look. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we'll just minimize that and we're gonna get a DOS interface up. And we're gonna check out the uh, IP address that we're given. Okay, so the gateway is 192.168.0.1. So let's go and have a look there. 192.168.0.1. Okay, and we're greeted with the tender interface setup. So we're going to click on start and it's detected the SIM. So we are using three internet IPv, IPv4 3.co.uk so we're just going to click next and we're going to keep the defaults here for the minute and we're going to set an administrator password rather than just having the uh, uh, no interface management password so we're going to click on next that's going to set the configuration and then reboot
Okay, so we're not going to connect to that Wi-Fi. We're just going to log back into the interface. There we go. So we've got our 4G connection here. And the first thing that I want to do is we're just going to step down here. So let's go to Internet settings. This um, enables you to switch the mobile, set, mobile connection on or off. Your Wi-Fi settings here. So set your Wi-Fi name and password channel bandwidth, all sorts of stuff, beamforming is enabled, anti-interference is enabled, uh, SMS, so, so you can send yourself, uh, well, I presume that's uh, SMS messaging. It's got a guest network, which can be quite useful, so you can give it a, a different SSID, but we're not going to be using that. Parental controls it's got as well, so let's have a look under here. Okay, so whether you want to allow it, whitelist it or blacklist it, websites you want to block, um, yeah, we won't be using any of that. Uh, and it also does VPN, so it's got a PPTP server, which is uh, not the most secure, but it'll do for the basics. Under our advanced settings, operating mode, so we should be able to switch this into access point mode or 3 4G router mode. So if you set this to wireless router mode, then it's going to disable everything. It's going to use the uh, WAN port because it assumes you're connecting to a network switch. Okay, so under the system settings, we want to have a look at the firmware upgrade options. So it will not connect to the tender server if you're using um, 4G, it just doesn't seem to work. Um, so what we are actually gonna do, we're gonna change the way that this unit works. So we're gonna shut that for a minute and then we're gonna go back and have a look at the unit itself. Okay, so on the unit itself, we've got this LAN WAN port. So I'm actually going to take a network connection or network cable from my main network and I'm going to plug that into the LAN WAN port like that. So this is now getting a, a, a WAN connection from there. So let's have a look at this and see if that helps us. Okay, so now let's go to firmware upgrade. And let's see if it can connect. Well, oh, actually, first of all, we want to go to internet status. So it's still using 4G. So let's, let's see if we can, uh, I wonder what happens if we disable this. Okay, so that 4G status has now been disabled. But the connection status is saying it's, okay, that's better. So it's dis disconnected now. So now we probably haven't got any internet connection. Let's double check that. Let's refresh the page. See if we can get to Google. No. Okay, so what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to change the format of this. So we're going to go into access wireless router mode or access point mode and we're going to save this. This should now reboot the unit and as you can see here um, your mobile data connection will be switched off. And we should start using the LAN or WAN port. Okay, that seems to be booting up. Okay, so here's our login page again. So now let's get logged back in. Okay, there we go. So we are now connecting via the Ethernet cable. And we can now go down to our firmware upgrade. Let's see if it can connect to the server. So let's go to the tender website and download the firmware. So we want to go to tender CDN. And we want to scroll all the way down because they don't make it easy to find. We want to go down to the download center. Then we want to select firmware on the left hand side. And now we want to check out the, the model that we've got. So on the bottom it will tell us this is a 4G07 model or device. 
So we can go back and do 4G07. Four, and there we go, this is the firmware version that we want. There's a few others here. I'm not sure what the ISP update file is, but uh, um, we're not going to be using that. We're just going to download this one here, which is the latest. 04070106. Now you do want to make sure that you've got the correct version. So there's two versions. There's a version one, uh, the firmware version one. So in other words, the device you're using. Um, this we know is a version two. So we're okay to download this. And here, click on download. Now we're going to click on open file. We're going to extract all. And that's it downloaded and extracted. We can now go back to our unit. I'm going to click on local upgrade. I'm going to select the file and it's here 4G07V2 and we want to select the bin file. We're going to click on open and then upgrade. And there we go, this starts the upgrade process. Okay, so that says it's completed, so now we can log back in. All right, let's go back to our system settings. And there we can see we're now on the correct, or the latest version. Okay, so now we want to re-enable our 4G connection. So if we go here, you'll see that there isn't any option to reset this. So what we want to do is we want to go down to system settings and we want to go to reboot and reset and we want to use the reset option that will re-enable the um, 4G connection. There's no other way you can do it unfortunately. So let's have a look and we'll see when that comes on. So we can remove our WAN cable out of the back and then we want to be watching for this uh, 4G connection to come online. And there we go, I can just see it's just come on. So we've now got our 4G connection again. We can go back to our interface. and wait for this to finish. Okay, so because we reset it, we've now got to go through the, uh, the setup process again. And you can see here's our SIM card settings. Um, if your provider has any specific settings, that's the place to put them. Let's set this password. There we go. We can go back and log in again. There we are. So there we go, we're back on 4G now. And the reason that um, you want to upgrade the firmware version is uh, if we can now go back to our firmware upgrade, you can see that it can now talk to the tender CDN servers, which it couldn't do before. Um, so you do want to upgrade to version 04070106 multi um, and that will give you the ability to um, check for firmware updates via your 4G connection so you don't need to have a physical uh, WAN port connection. Uh, so the settings again are all in here whether you want to enable it, disable it, if you want to go abroad and, and use it, you would set your data roaming to enabled, um, 3 or 4G only, or 4G preferred, and then your band, you can leave that to auto basically, don't need to change that at all, in fact don't need to change any of these. Uh, again, if you've got another provider, when you stick your SIM card in, it's going to populate your APN details, uh, whether you need to use an M password and the type of authentication. 
And then again here, you've got uh, various options. You can reset your data limit or set a data limit here. So if your SIM card only allows you like 50 gig download, you can set that here. Um, bandwidth control um, for your clients, how much bandwidth you want to give devices. You can also use the Tender Wi-Fi app if you want to. Filter by MAC address, firewall is enabled. So very, very basic stuff in there. Um, ah, okay, so this is an interesting one. If your um, mobile provider gives you um, an update file, then you can, you can update this there. Static routes, DDNS, virtual server, DMZ host, UPnP is enabled. So that's pretty much it. Let's go and have a look at our LAN settings. So this is where you can set your LAN subnet uh, and the DHCP server if you're going to be using it. So if you're using a 4G connection, then you will be using this uh, at least time and whether you want to sp set specific DNS settings in here. Reservations, all the usual stuff. Uh, remote management, uh, keep this one disabled probably. That is about it. Let's have a look at the system log. So system log, fairly basic um, entries in there, but it should help you diagnose any issues that you've got. So that's it. That's the, uh, that's the tender 4G router. So if you found that video useful about the Tender 4G router, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I just want to say thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.